In this video, I will demonstrate how to make a retro postcard in Adobe Photoshop. With your chosen background image already open in Photoshop, go to File, Place Embedded, and choose another photo from your files to add for the lettering clipping masks. This image's dimensions don't matter right now, so continue placing additional images into your document, and you can turn off the visibility of your background layer if it helps to simplify your screen. I will skip ahead and here I have a variety of images placed and it's helpful if you name them in your layers panel. Then select the type tool in your toolbar, click on your screen and type the first letter for your postcard. My location is the seaside town of Capitola. I suggest using a bold, thick, sans serif typeface. This will become your clipping mask so color doesn't matter and click the check mark to confirm the letter. Then click again with the type tool and type the second letter and click the check mark. And you will have to do this for every letter of your location because each letter needs to be on its own layer. Switch over to your move tool in the toolbar and position your letters on top to determine which fits each image best. You'll notice that I have two extra images to give me options in case some of the letters just don't overlap the subject matter correctly. And if you find that you would like more room to work in, you can select both the letter and the image and move them down in the picture plane. Then make sure just the image is selected and click Command or Control T on your keyboard to transform that image to the correct size, paying attention to the subject matter in the image as you imagine it inside the letter. Then in your Layers panel, you'll want to click and hold on that image while dragging it above the corresponding letter. Now the image is on top of that letter. You'll go over to Layer and create clipping mask, or you can use the shortcut in your layers panel. With the image selected, hold down the Alt or Option key on your keyboard, and once your cursor becomes this icon, click on the line between the image and the letter. And now you'll see that the letter has created a clipping mask with your image inside. Continue to do these steps with each letter and its corresponding image, and note that you can adjust the image inside the letter by making sure just the image is selected as you move it around inside the clipping mask. And you can also still use the Command or Control T shortcut to transform that image as well. Next, you'll add effects to one of your letters. Click on a letter in your Layers panel and then go down to the Effects icon at the bottom, click Blending Options, and your layer style panel will open. Click the check mark to add a stroke to your letter and then click on the word stroke to bring up the options to make changes. Traditionally, this style of postcard uses a white stroke around the letters and sometimes it has two strokes, a black and a white, which you can do by hitting the plus sign to add a second stroke, but I'll just keep the one white stroke for now. The style of postcard also has letters that appear three-dimensional, and Photoshop does have 3D text options, but those can be tricky even for experts, so we'll use drop shadows to add a faux 3D effect instead. Click on the check mark next to drop shadow, and then click on the words drop shadow to bring up these options. For the color of your drop shadow, I recommend going darker. In my opinion, it adds to the illusion better. I also suggest setting your opacity at 100% using a 135 degree angle, setting your distance at five pixels, your spread to 100, and your size to 10. Depending on the size of your original image and the points for your font, your numbers may differ, but follow along and add a few more drop shadows before making adjustments to see how this faux effect works. So now next to drop shadow, click on the plus sign to add an additional drop shadow. For this second window, keep everything the same except change your distance to 10 pixels and your size to 15. Click the plus sign again for a third drop shadow, and this time change your distance to 15 pixels and your size to 20. And you can keep adding drop shadows as you like, continuing to add an additional five pixels to the distance and size each time. But again, your numbers might be different, so adjust it accordingly. And now you have these effects applied to your first letter. Right click on them in your layers panel and choose Copy Layer Style. Then select each additional letter and you can hold Command or Control to select them all at the same time. Just make sure you're not selecting the images. And then right click and find Paste Layer Style. And those effects should be applied to each letter. You can click this arrow to collapse those effects to save room, 
And notice that I've turned off the visibility of my extra images that I wasn't going to use, though I could just delete them. And you can turn on the visibility of your background to see how your total image looks. This next step is optional, but if you'd like to organize your layers, you can select the image and its corresponding letter, go over to Layer, and choose Group Layers. Or you can select the two in the Layers panel and use the shortcut command Control or Command G on your keyboard. I'll do that for each image and letter pairing, and then I'll go back and label them as well so I know what's contained within each group. To help you place your letters, go over to your Type tool and click on the photo and type out your location again. Click on this icon in the Options bar to bring up the Warp Text panel, and you can choose the style you like. Rise is a popular choice for these retro postcards, and so is Flag. I think I'll choose Rise. And know that your letters won't look exactly like this, but it's there to help you place them. So grab your text layer that you just added and position it below your clipping masks in your layers panel. Then switch over to your move tool, hold the shift key on your keyboard, and you can drag the letters on top of the warped text to help you with its placement. Remember you're moving the letter with the photo as a pair, so you'll want to hold the shift key or it might move the image itself instead of the letter. And you can turn off the visibility of the background helper text. Select that type tool again and add the text greetings from in a handwritten typeface style. You can use the warp text tool again, the move tool, and the command or control T shortcut to transform it and put it into place. Some retro postcards leave this text plain. Others might add a drop shadow or a stroke. And there's usually a second phrase, such as a state or country, that has the same styling. Now you have all of the components, so it's a great time to go to File, Save As, and save your work. I'll save it in my Creative Cloud file in a folder for this class. I always save it as my first name, last initial, underscore, and the unit, but I'm going to call this my modern postcard and save it as a Photoshop file. And these next steps, you'll add textures over everything. So go to Layer, Flatten Image, and you can discard any hidden layers. You cannot easily step backwards from this, so it is very smart that you are saving your work up to this point. You'll see over in your layers, they are now combined into one. Right click on it and convert it to a smart object. Don't miss this step, it's often skipped. Make sure you see this icon in the thumbnail so you know it's changed into a smart object. And so that this file does not save over the previous one, go to File, Save As, and let's change the name. From here on out, this will be our retro postcard and click Save. In these next steps, I'll show you optional ways to distress your postcard and make it look older. You could choose to do some or all of these. We'll start by making the image look less crisp. Go up to Filter, Noise, Median, and this box will pop up. Adjust the radius just slightly to soften it and click OK. You can add a little bit of motion by going up to Filter, Distort, Ripple, and you can adjust the options here, the amount and the size, to add a little bit of rippling around the edges of your letters, and click OK. Let's add some brushwork next. So go up to Layer, New, and then Layer to add an additional layer to your project. In your toolbar, you're going to click on the Brush tool and add some textured effects to this new layer. Up in the options bar, click this drop down to bring up a variety of brushes. And if you don't see legacy brushes, click this button here and add legacy brushes so you have a lot more options. I really like Kyle's splatter brushes. And you can click and add some random splotches and texture all over your image. Another brush I like is in legacy brushes under dry media brushes. And that's the pencil brush to add lines and scratches all over the image. And I also like the texture of the chunky charcoal brush. So you can add as much or as little texture as you like. When you're finished with that layer of brushwork selected, you can click this drop down to change the blend mode. Soft light is a nice choice to make the texture more subtle, or you can choose hard light and adjust its opacity to make it more subtle. Back on the image layer, click on effects for that layer style, and you can add a texture to your image. 
In this Patterns dropdown, I picked this grass texture, and you can adjust the scale and depth of that pattern. Click OK, and you'll see it's added a rough texture over the entire image. With that same layer image selected, come up to Image, Adjustments, Photo, Filter, and it will add a colored filter over your entire image. You can adjust the density of this filter, and there's also a sepia tone filter that will add an aged look to your postcard. I think I like the warming filter best. But you can click on and off the visibility of that photo filter in your layers panel to see which you like most. And I think this looks great. So once again, let's go to File, Save As. This is still our retro postcard, so I'll just click Save and replace the old one. And then I'll save this again as a JPEG for my web page. And that is how you turn your photos into a retro postcard in Adobe Photoshop.